didn't buy that fact. But he's trying to explain the fact he's having a scene and he gets up and runs away. And he's with his pants down around his ankles. And he comes back out and his pants are all damp. Uh huh. So, of course, it was the bottle of Purell that was in his pants pocket. And the other one, and the other person down there, she turns around to the audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and he's going like this with this bottle. See, I carry a Purell around with me all the time. Yeah, like this. Yeah. Like, and then, you know, he said he really doesn't enjoy doing them. Well, then don't write it in. Then don't write it in. Uh -huh. But, um, but let's put it this way, according to the, uh, Bauer is the family man, Andrew Bauer from, what was it, Homicide? I don't know. No, he was on television. I recognize him, but I don't know he was on he was TV, in. he was on, um, and here's the one neat thing about computers, which we can't do. This is the only time we actually do this stuff, but unfortunately, IMDB does not work well since Amazon took it over, as we keep talking about. I mean, the it's thing working is, a lot slower. I know they changed the page. I mean, oh, I know. So, uh, you know, uh, a man of a certain age, he was, you know, he was on House, and he was, you know, see what was it? I know, it was really slow, folks. You know. Oh, he was in Fantastic Four and Drama Stream. Yeah, I know, and Drama Stream, which was a come on, Fantastic Four. I know, trying to find out Hack, which I never watched. Gideon's Crossing, which nobody watched. So basically, what happens is um, you you get stuck in a rut when you when you're a homicide. It was homicide life on the street mm -hmm. for six years, and then he quit to go be I a star. I didn't even know that show. Yeah, he quit to be a star and didn't work. So and then he's been Jackie Chan Adventures. I like that one. He said he's a uh, He's a voiceover actor too. I mean, people recognize him as this great big guy that they're all talking about. Like, there's one like nobody is going to believe that this man can't play, can't hit. Yeah. Oh, baseball. He said he's uh, you know he's a big guy. Like you know he, like he gained like they said 30 pounds or something for the role. Oh, did he? looked like he was out of shape and middle aged. So and he's the young one of the bunch, but. Um, but so they they've got a very, I mean, very talented, recognizable cast in this movie. Oh, yeah. Or actually, movie, TV show. Yeah, but of the three, the only one that's got anything that he's doing out, out, out in this show is Bauer. Oh, is he? Yeah. You know, actually, Beluga does voiceovers too, which people, uh, you know, don't really know, but he does a lot of voiceover stuff. And, uh, but, um,. Uh, here, here's the problem though, it's like they, this season they give it, uh, they split it into two pieces trying to build an audience and unfortunately it, it lost 50% of its audience. Oh really? Yeah. What happens is sometimes when you only do uh, like 10 episodes, you don't have enough episodes to build up an audience over a span of time. Because it stops and then it stops, it, it starts and then it stops for a half a year. Oh. So they tried it. Well, we'll they give them a twelve a twelve episode run this time. There's basically got two more episodes, and they split it up trying to keep. You know, they they did the first six, then reran the thing, and then they reran it, and reran it, did the next new six, uh, uh, and then the running. I mean, you know how much show how much trouble the show is in. It's on. A, they rerun on at twelve midnight on the on the West Coast. Midnight. Yeah. Which means it's on three o'clock in the morning on the East Coast, and it's got uh, its ratings are atrocious. Okay, they're trying to. Here was a, I read one of the responses. It says, "Men of a certain age, why?" They said, you know, another one said. Well, maybe uh, it's to make men feel better about what they're going through. No, they also said uh, yeah. it, it. It it makes makes old-fashioned Jewish doll look exciting. Mm. They, they, you know, they keep telling him to get some humor in this thing, and this what the episode we saw was the humor episode. And what was the humor? Every cliche that you've ever seen in a movie about sports, you know, I had to pay some of the players to play and don't tell the other players that were paying. Of course, that's the first thing they did. Yeah. And they're out in the field in a tight moment. Yeah. Oh, and the female softball player is gay. Well, no, she's not gay. Oh, yeah, I always thought she might not want me to play because I'm gay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, the big moment, the guy hits the ball and he's running to first base, you know, you know and he falls on his face and gets, and gets out. You know, um, they, uh, 
the big moment, the guy that fell wins the game for him. But a guy is like this much taller than I am, and he's got arms like that. And you know, when he, when he hit the ball, it's never going to be fouled again. And then he, uh, and then he also, you know, he's like a huge man. I'm 220, and he's probably about 250. He runs into the little girl catcher, of which they would have never had behind the plate. Yeah. It looks good. She would have been smart enough to move. I know. They would not have stood there with the ball. But, like um, she's standing there at home plate ready to tag him in and he just goes... And, and you'll be happy. Like a train. And you will be happy that we got the cliche of Scott Bellick's wife realizes how much she does love him and she's there at the end of the game to see him in his triumph winning. But this happens to be one episode. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you put it, you threw every cliche. I mean, I, I okay. Um, my guess is they thought they were going to get the uh, a funny Ray Romano, and instead he's trying to. I mean, I look at it this way because I passed the age a long time ago. Is that these guys? He's written a show where everybody's becoming their father. Mm -hmm. They even they even put uh, his father, you know, played by uh, you know. Um, I know you who you're talking Robert about. Robert Loggia. Yes. Because I worked with Robert, oh God, how old am I? I worked with Robert Loggia who was a young person on the, the Nine Lives of El Bago Baca. <laughs> he was young, tall, trim, dark haired. Now he's, you know, old. He's, no, his hoarse voice is gone now. He's speaking, mm -hmm. you know, more like he did when he was younger. But um, he slowed down. And if you look, Romano's character is becoming like. Uh, his father. Andre Bauer's character is becoming like his father. And, um, Scott Volokas wasn't in there. Wasn't in there. But you can bet that. Or Bacula, now Bacula, I'd say Voloka. You know, but Bacula, it was ever, in whichever way you just found that pronunciation. But my guess is if they wrote his father in, he would be just like his father, becoming just like his father was. Mm. So, um, it's. Uh, here's the thing, is if you're writing things from life and the people that you are around are of a certain age, guess what you're going to write about? People your age. That's right. Well, you know, one, they said we just want to write the show like we live it. That's what Ray said. Yeah, but they don't live it. Now, yeah, like they, they, I had that pointed out. Uh, yeah, oh yeah. Like you get into your, you know, your 4x4 four four and drive up to the set and he said, well, you know, I mean, you know, I have my chauffeur drive me up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you know, but he said I don't have a super limo. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's the difference. You know, the guys that, that of that age would be, you know, no, uh, okay. Baluka is the only one in character. You know, he's a, he is in his, you know, he's doing that midlife crisis thing, and guys when they get in their midlife crisis, all get toys to drive around in. It sort of makes them. That's how you can always tell when they're in a midlife crisis. Yeah, and we put and they were you know, uh, uh, they, you know, two of them work in um, auto dealership and the other sells stuff. basically in charge of a of a, a party factory type place, which he's also taking. He's playing a bookie on the side too. The bounce house. Yeah, a bookie. So he's, he's cheating on. He, basically, he's a bookie that's cheating on the bookie he's working for. Which basically gets you axed eventually. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to be, sooner or later, if the stage show stays on, he's going to get the hell beat out of him for stiffing the book. He's taking bets from, you know, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's running a book on the side of the book. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting there worried that the, that he's, the first time he did a book, he booked something on his own, that he's going to lose. So, and he, and he didn't have the money to pay it off. But, um, <clears throat> and they did, they, I mean, um, they've already had one, I mean, I didn't see the episode before this, but I understand that the episode before it, you know, you know Baluka got, they got into a big fight and Baluka got the hell beat out of him, which you could see with a black eye during the Oh, yeah, because he did have a black eye during the whole Yeah, time. because these guys aren't fighters. They're not lovers either, but they're not fighters. But um, it was an interesting thing. It was, What's more, what I find to be more interesting 
then the show is when the rep has these guys, the people connected with the show, come on and talk about the show. Mm -hmm. That's the interesting part. Yeah, it is. Um, hearing the backstories and the background and what happened and on set. Yeah, and it's because of the fact that the people in the building are all, I mean, this isn't a paparazzi type thing, folks. This is where the people come there and they have intelligent questions to ask people. Sometimes they ask questions where, uh, so you won't sue us. That's coming up in the next episode. Oh, yeah, they did talk about that. Yeah, the very next episode, what a guy was talking about. You know, they're talking about how, you know, that you, you, you think of things, you know, that when you're driving, you're killing all this time and you're doing this. Oh, why don't you just put a webcam in there while you're sitting there in the car? Yeah, that's the next episode, which is funny. The, and the very next episode has to do, you know, but that's just the way it works because they're picking things out from... You pick it out from life. Yeah, and then they, um, they, uh, they say, has anybody seen the movie Diner? No. Where all of these uh, old college guys get together and they go sit at a diner and talk about things. Guess where a great piece of this television show is situated at. You know, in, a, in, a, in a hamburger joint. I know, but that's kind of typical. It's easy. It's on set. I, I know. It's stationary, one location. Yeah, it, but it's this, it's, it's, you know, rip off, rip off, rip off. You could have went to, I mean, these guys are not broke type folks. You could have went to a regular, you know, you could have went to a set down place or could have went over to a, you know, uh, went, you know, went to, went well, out in the park with hot dogs and, but they just happened to pick the diner with the big mandatory window out there, which they could swing, they only have one camera, they got a 16 millimeter camera they're using. Mm -hmm. And it's done because we want to give it that cinema verite look. And that's because they don't have any budget left after they hired the principal actors. <laughs> and they said they paid too much money for their music. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They they pay their overdoing stuff. So, but we're doing this. Okay. It looks like hell. I mean. Well, they did. They did a good job of timing the music with what was going on. Yeah. But they're picking music. I mean, as far as paying for it, I'm guessing they're picking catalog music. That basically they pay a flat fee for everything in the catalog. So, but they do have some original music, they said. Am I, being, am I being a downer? Yeah, because I know the people involved. Uh, and it irritates me when they, the best that they can do is to borrow from other people. Oh, that's irritating. Because they are very talented. Yeah. I mean, um, I honestly say it looks like all three men are walking through their roles. It's just like, you know, it's a job, we're going to do it, and we get paid to do it, but it's just, you know, like the, uh, like in the industry, they say, you know, you've done the thing so many times. <laughs>